Think you've mastered Marvel Snap? Conquest Mode is the ultimate test. Four tiers, relentless opponents, and five wins in a row to claim the infinite border. I've conquered it 12 times. Let me show you how you can too. Deck building. Your path to winning Conquest actually starts before you even enter Conquest. It is super important to have a tech or surprise card, something that is unexpected coming from your deck. Marvel Snap is unique in that it isn't strictly about wins and losses, it's about cubes. Is it about my cube? So if you are able to maximize your cube gains, there have been plenty of matches where my win-loss record is two and four, or two and three, one in four, something ridiculous. I don't think one in four is real, <laughs> but it, it was definitely a losing record. That was because I retreated for one cube and I was able to win four or eight cubes. That is super important in Conquest and having a surprise or tech card is the way to go about that. Proving Grounds. If you are trying hard in Proving Grounds, you are doing Conquest all wrong. Snap on turn one, play out the game fully, no retreating, and then concede if you lose. You shouldn't be wasting your time or brain power too much in Proving Grounds. You have a long way to go. Do not make that journey even longer by playing hard in Proving Grounds. The additional benefit is that when you are forcing yourself to play out games, you can start to find weird ways to win if your deck has been composed in that fashion and you just can get better when your back is against the wall, which definitely will happen in later matches as your conquest journey evolves. Silver Round. The Silver Round is still at the beginning of your conquest journey. So my rules in the Silver Round are pretty much the same as if I were playing in ranked mode. So there is a previous video on that. If you want more information on the Silver Conquest level, or on rank, I would suggest watching that video. Otherwise, just snap if you have an advantage. Don't take it too seriously, because again, your journey is long, and these first two rounds, the Proving Ground and the Silver Round, are really for you to better learn your deck and be able, being able to navigate unclear or uncertain situations, which will have an immense benefit if you can master that in the later rounds. Gold and Infinite Conquest. All of the tips from here on out are specific to gold and the infinite tier. This is where the bulk of your brain power will need to be applied and focus. So let's get into it. Play cautious in the early rounds. In the early rounds, you are really trying to get a gauge on what deck your opponent is using, the strategies they're using, and you're just information gathering. You don't want your match to end too quickly. You want to be able to make informed decisions. Therefore, playing cautiously in rounds one through four is the optimal way to go. If you are advantaged or neutral into your opponent's matchup, snap if you have the perfect hand only. Otherwise, just continue playing as normal for information. If you are disadvantaged into your matchup, you are going up against a player that is better than you. I know I have. If you are going up against a matchup that you are disadvantaged into. You want to play aggressive and risky. You want RNG to balance out this game, to equalize it, and potentially give it to you. Because without RNG, you're a goner. So you better rely on RNG, playing into unknown locations, snapping aggressively and risky, and trying to end the match as quick as possible before your opponent learns what you are trying to do and is able to just overwhelm you because they are either better or have a better deck. End game snapping. We're in the end game now. Starting in round five and later, you are just trying to win. You should have all of the information you need and now you are just trying to snap based on that information and based on how your game plan is going and based on how your opponent's game plan is going. If you have the cards you need to win, 
based on the, your matchup into your opponent, you should be snapping. If you see they are failing to execute their game plan, you should also be snapping then. If you see them executing their game plan, you should be retreating. Because you know at this point the deck that your opponent is running, you really need to be familiar with how their deck plays and when their deck is performing and when it is not. Know the meta. Knowing the popular decks that people play is such an advantage. You will be able to more quickly assess what deck they are using, and just knowing how they want to play will enable you to snap and retreat smarter. There are a number of different websites you can look up to research the top meta decks, and you don't need to be an expert in them, but you should, in general, know the cards they run. Snap on the unexpected. Regardless of turn, if you are going to play a tech card or a surprise card, a card that is not typically in your deck, snap before it gets revealed. In Conquest, information is so important because you are playing the same opponent over and over again. So they need to pay a cost to see what your exact tech card is. Because once you use it, the opponent now knows for the entirety of that matchup that you have this card in your deck. I love playing Phoenix Force in Conquest. My version of Phoenix Force has Shang-Chi in it. This is a totally unexpected play. Some versions even have a life in them. Before I play either of those cards, even if it is turn six, I snap. This is totally unexpected. When people see Phoenix Forest, they are not thinking Shang-Chi, they are not thinking Eliath. So therefore, I need them to pay two or four cubes to see this information. Now, once the information has been exposed, you do not want to snap on turn six if you're going to play that same surprise card, because guess what? It's no longer a surprise card. So you only get one opportunity to make this snap well, if the opponent retreats, you now have another opportunity later because they haven't actually seen your unexpected card. But if they see out the game, then that is the last time you can snap on turn six for that specific surprise card. Snap on locations. When a location is favorable for your deck, you do not want to snap immediately unless you want to tell your opponent, hey, this specific location is great for my deck. What you want to do is wait a turn and then snap, ideally, especially if it is one of the first two locations. Then you are not communicating to your opponent, oh, location one flipped, it's fantastic for my deck, but you didn't snap on turn one, you snapped on turn two instead. So by doing this, you kind of hide the meaning of your snaps. When you watch other streamers, sometimes you will hear them say, oh look, they snapped, they wanna do this. That is because they played the game for a while, a lot, and they generally understand what snaps mean. So against good players, and in Gold and Infinite Conquest, you will be facing good players. You want your snap to communicate as little information as possible or hide the meaning of your specific snap. Timing your surprise. With tech or surprise cards, you do not want to play them just to play them. They need to be played for the specific purpose you included them in the deck for unless you expect to win eight cubes or in the match. Information is so much more valuable in Conquest as I've said repeatedly throughout this video already. So save that surprise or tech card for later rounds, if at all possible, but do not just save it if it's risky. If you can get the win, play the card. But if you really can get away with not playing that surprise or tech card, don't. There have been games where I go all the way to the wire with somebody and I think I know their deck completely, and they saved that surprise card and timed it perfectly with the last match and I lose. I've also done the same to my opponent. 
So it goes both ways and it is always highly effective, especially in later rounds when your opponent already thinks they know your deck. How to lose. What? If you are going to lose and nobody has snapped, the stakes have not increased, the cubes are not going to double the next turn, stop playing cards. Just don't do it. And keep playing out the game, not playing cards, and ideally your opponent continues to play cards. Now, what this does is it allows you to gain information and it's all one-sided. Your opponent in all likelihood will continue to play cards, you will continue to learn the different cards they have in their deck, while your opponent gains none of that information. You only want to retreat when the cubes will increase the next round or the game is about to end, and now you have such a huge informational advantage going into the next round. This primarily applies to the early rounds in a given match, because in the later rounds, you should probably already know the cards in your opponent's deck, but this is still a very useful tip in those early rounds. Time and focus. Be sure you set enough time aside to be able to focus solely on the game. Conquest is, at least personally for me, is the most mentally taxing mode. I constantly need to be focused through multiple matches, multiple rounds, and not slip up because the tiniest slip up, the tiniest, I lost two cubes early on in this match, and it comes back to bite me because now RNG got me, location RNG got me at the end of the this match. I could have spared, I could have weathered that R bad RNG storm, and I could have come out victorious, but instead, I lost focus momentarily, I had a bad stay, and now I'm done. Just breathe and relax. This is by far the most difficult tip to just relax, but nerd, I'm trying to win five matches in a row. I can't relax, I need to be focused, like you just told me. Being relaxed actually allows you to be more focused and it allows you to think clearer. I know this is very difficult because before I won my first infinite border and even on my second and third infinite border win, I was very stressed, anxious, like, oh my God, I might lose this one and oh, this is gonna be rough. So I know it's tough. The things that helped me overcome that is one, winning the conquest mode a lot, which I assume you probably haven't done if you're watching this video, but if you have, that's one thing you can always rest assured on is, okay, I've won this plenty. Of course, I've lost plenty, but I've won plenty. So if I don't win this time, eh, not that big of a deal. The other tip is just playing Conquest a lot. Making bad stays, I would advise you doing this in the Silver Conquest, but just make bad stays and do dumb moves and just get used to losing and going, eh, it's, it's not that big of a deal. It's just silver conquest. And it's really not, it's fine. Hopefully some of that just sinks in, that relaxed feeling that it at least lessens some of that stress and anxiety when you are in gold and infinite conquest. Now, in the final round of Infinite Conquest, I don't know if there's anything to lessen that stress <laughs> and anxiousness. But if you've made it up to that point thus far with applying some of the tips that I've discussed and some of the tips that I will, ideally it all comes together and you can actually complete the task at hand. Deck trackers, use one. <laughs> now, it can of course be done. You can of course win conquest mode without a deck tracker, but I'm sure it makes your life easier if you use one, being able to know what's in your deck, being able to know what cards are in your opponent's deck, especially as the match goes on, is so huge and such a big advantage. Now, I don't use deck trackers at all, so, I've won double digit conquest borders without using a deck tracker. I'm proof it can be done, but it is such a massive advantage that in good conscience, I have to include it in this video. Treat every single round like it is important. Being up eight to two, 
does not mean you have won. You haven't won until you're back in the menu. If you are in the game and it is eight to two, you have not won. I have lost being up eight to two. Many players have lost being up eight to two. It is not a guarantee. If you are up eight to two and your opponent snaps and you can't win with your current hand, you need to retreat. If you see a horrible location for you and it's a great location for them, you need to retreat. Maximize your one cube retreats to extend the game out because what will happen is you will run into a streak of horrible luck where the locations all hate you, your card draw hates you, and the game hates you. And the game loves your opponent. So there have been games where I've been up eight to two and I've played super seriously continually and retreated for one and I weathered four or five bad luck games in a row. And I would have lost if I had gone, eh, I'm up eight to two. My opponent snapped, eh, I'm up eight to two, it's fine. So keep that in mind if you wanna be super serious about this. That is a very important tip. Treat every round like it is important. Use your best deck. Ideally in Conquest, you should be using a deck that you know that you're comfortable with, that you have fun with, that you like, and that you're familiar with. I personally love the Phoenix Force deck that I have. It has both Shang-Chi and Eliath in it. Those are two surprise slash tech cards that people do not expect. And I am super comfortable with Phoenix Force and how to snap and when to retreat and what to play and weird lines. And I love it to death. That is the deck, more or less, that I've won all of my Conquest borders with, save two maybe, because I'm just super comfortable with it. So the more comfortable you are with a deck, the better you will know snap and retreat lines and what to play and when to play and how to play into any given matchup. Retreat later. Most of the time, it just won't matter. Players will play the game out anyway. But if they don't, you definitely want to retreat later. A tie is much better, and you also set yourself up for later rounds. And what I mean by that is, if you establish yourself as a retreat later player, your opponent won't actually know if you are retreating later or if you are staying in because you can win. This is important because now they just don't know and they may have a bad stay thinking, I think they're gonna retreat later. And they stay and they just lose because you can blow them out of the water because your play was so strong even though your board didn't look that strong. Your opponent's profile. It is best to treat every player with respect and not judge them based on their collection level and based on their profile. So maybe you don't actually look at their profile if you are more prone to judge people based on that CL and not how they're actually playing. That said, if you know you can treat every player with utmost respect from the 1000 collection level CL to the 50,000, then look at their collection level because it can tell you some information about the player. Higher CL players are more likely to, of course, have more of the cards, and they're also more likely to be better snappers and retreaters. And there's an, a high likelihood that your high CL players, when they snap, their snap is telling you something very specific. They are less likely to be confused. They have a clear idea of what their deck is doing, and so their snaps typically mean something. The lower CL players, of course, will have less cards, but they also may be unfamiliar into certain matchups and what cards exist and what cards are in decks. So sometimes their snaps will just be ill-advised because they are just playing into a bad matchup or they are, don't know what you are doing, but you know exactly what they are doing. I'm a conquest loser. There will of course be exceptions to this, 
but every player has a losing record in Conquest, including me. In Infinite Conquest, winning five matches in a row is the hardest thing you can do in the game. I have suffered many heartbreaking losses, including a disconnect loading into the last match. Each loss is heartbreaking and it's devastating, but you just take a break, you walk away, and you come back, dust yourself off, and keep going at it. This is super key to remember because I'm trying to get you as relaxed as possible and it's not like the world is crashing in on you when you inevitably lose conquest. Because again, I have lost more conquests than I have won, much more. I haven't kept track. I don't know how I would keep track because I play mostly on mobile, but I've definitely lost a lot more, a lot more than I've won. So if I've won 12, I've at least lost 36, 50, it's, it's been a lot. So you definitely will lose. This is about just putting in time, trying to refine your skills. Hopefully you have a magical lucky run where you are playing into a matchup every game that is weak to yours, your deck, and you just breeze through. But for the vast majority of your runs, it's going to be difficult and tough, and you can maybe hope or one easy match, easy match. But other than that, it's going to be tough and you're going to lose a lot. And honestly, you just kind of have to get comfortable with it, make peace that that's going to happen. And just have the trust that if you stick to it, if you apply the tips in this video and my other videos, that you will prevail at some point. Thank you for making it to the end of the video as usual and thank you to the members of the channel. I also have a couple of bonus information slash tips that I couldn't find a place for in the video. The first one is watch my channel. Your channel stinks. Now I say that half jokingly, but with all of my deck videos, more so than watching the specific deck, which I know a lot of people do, you, you only watch if you're super interested in the deck. Maybe not you who is watching right now because you've made it to the end of the video, but a lot, there are a lot of people like that. And the, the key is with my channel, I really try to explain my thought processes and moves and strategy because I want to show just how my mind works and the thought process and have you apply some of the same thought processes to your games. Even though they are different decks, by and large, there are similarities with that thought process. So the more you see and the more you watch that, hopefully the more can be applied to your game. I also watch plenty of other streamers. One of them in this case is Binks. He is a master in conquest. And he had a live stream with a specific guest where this guest was talking about Conquest and Binks was talking about Conquest and it was so insightful. Now, I didn't watch the entirety of the, long, of the live stream. Yes, long stream it was. I will have a link in the description for that if you wanna to continue to gain more valuable information. But I was super impressed, I agreed with 100% of what they were saying in the half hour I think that I watched. So the information is fantastic. You can see another player demonstrate how to snap, how to retreat with, with his specific deck. But again, a lot of the advice is shared throughout everybody's deck. So I would recommend at least checking out part of this live stream video for additional information. And now it's time for the bloopers. Later round snappings. Snappings? <laughs> now you have entered into j And you can't win with the hand in your deck? Be sure you set enough su This is by far the most, this is by far the most typ typical, 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 oh, oh, oh.